This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. I'm going to be doing a live webinar on May 31st uh, from 4 to 5 Eastern Time. And uh, I'm doing this for my subscribers, but I am inviting, I am inviting other people to join. Uh, it is a free webinar. Uh, we're going to discuss the market and some ideas, and I'm going to cover uh, some questions that I've gotten from subscribers. Uh, and uh, you're, you're welcome to join in and uh, see what uh, we talk about, uh, probably pick up a few things. Um, but I won't be inviting everyone to each one of these, but I, I decided to, uh, I wanted to let people take a peek. So you can register at uh, www.rablestockresearch.com forward slash webinar. If you click on that link, it'll take you to um, this information here to, uh, to go ahead and and register. Okay, so uh, today what I want to do is um, I really want to go into the log file. So last week I talked about log sheets and the yes or no, um, it, putting either a yes or no to, depending on whether the what type of trade, like did you just make something up? Did you just buy something because you felt like you wanted to buy it? It didn't really meet your criteria. You just bought it. Um, and and or you bought something but then didn't follow your plan. Either one of those would be qualified as a no trade. And we want to focus in on yes trades. But what you want to do in addition to that is, is actually have another column next to the yes or no. And, and what you're going to try and identify are your demons. So I, before I get into the actual talk about um, stocks and the log file and all the common issues, I do want to make mention of the fact that when I grew up, football was like my favorite sport. I loved watching it. It's amazing. Uh, I thought um, just exciting and uh, very enjoyable. Uh, but in the last you know, five years or so, I just don't really enjoy it as much. And one of the things that happened uh, that that explains it for me is that about three years ago, I saw a retired cornerback who was like a uh, Hall of Fame cornerback interviewed. And he said, you know, the the idea he was there questioning him about uh, the changes in the rules and the fact that there's a lot more of defensive holding and uh, interference. And uh, sometimes they're not getting caught with that. And he said, you know, it, I wouldn't call it a motto, but the kind of the word, the phrase they use is if, if, you're, if you aren't cheating, then you aren't trying. That's their, that's their kind of like, that's their phrase and to me, that is just like everything that I can't stand. So they're basically trying to cheat and not get caught, hoping that the referees don't see it. And just thinking that that's kind of the basis of what they're trying to accomplish, because the refs can't call f a, f a penalty on every single play. Otherwise, the game would never finish. So it just makes sense to me why the game for me is not I just don't enjoy it as much. And then a lot of people ask me, why do I like golf so much? And the reality is, is that not only um, are there no, there are officials out on the course, but they're not following these guys around on every play. They're actually there to help them if they have a question. But in golf, you call a penalty on yourself. If you, if something, you did something, you basically call it on yourself. Okay. And if, um, just to give you an example, my son is a golfer, and I've mentioned that a few times. He's trying to make it down in Florida on the um, minor league circuit, uh, work his way up to the PGA Tour. But the interesting thing is when he was in high school, he was playing in a, a junior event, and uh, he played a pretty nice round. We were driving. We just started driving home, and we started talking about the round, and he said, you know what? I just realized that I put in the wrong score on one of these holes, and and so he's he just didn't feel right about it. So we turned around, drove back, talked to the tournament director, explained what happened. And the guy said, look, I appreciate what you're doing here, but you're DQ'd for this. You can't sign a card incorrectly. If you if you sign a card incorrectly, you're DQ'd, you're disqualified. Now, in this situation, obviously, he felt pretty bad, but I think he felt pretty good overall just knowing that, you know, he was being honest with himself. 
And so why am I even bringing this up when we're talking about the stock market or trading? And the reality is you need to call a penalty on yourself. You need to call, uh, if you make a mistake, you have to be able to write it down. Trust me on this. This is one of the hardest things you will ever do. If, you, if you're trying to be successful as a trader and you're keeping a, a detailed log sheet and to put down on paper the mistakes you're making over and over and over again is, is really, really difficult. I know because what I would do is I would have this sheet and I'd be doing fine. I'd be having a really good uh, streak of trades and maybe mix in a loss here and there and I'd be fine with it. But then all of a sudden you lose a couple times in a row and you just you have a very difficult time saying to yourself, I did this wrong. I did this wrong. I did this wrong and, and repeating it over and over again. And uh, the fact is, is that if you want to make the leap if you really want to go to the uh, to another level in your trading, you have to get to the point where you're willing to be honest with yourself and call a penalty on yourself. I'm going to call it that. So in my course, I actually go through and I describe the different um, areas that uh, I think you should write down on your um, uh log sheet. And, uh, and I go through them in detail. I'm only going to go through a few of these. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll mention every one of these, but I'm only going to go through a few in detail. So let's just say hesitating is one. So let's say you're, you're looking at a trade and let's go and uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, back here, we had a pinch play in the XLK. Market was still in a pretty questionable, uh, and it still is in a questionable spot, right? But the uh, XLK had a mice move on the weekly chart. Uh, the uh, MACD crossed above, gave it a little pinch play here. Green DI was showing improvement. And then we had a zero line reversal with low ADX. You draw your trend line in place. And the moment this takes out this trend line, I mean, literally, the moment it takes it out, you're supposed to go long. That's a, that's one of the triggers out of my course. And if you're following the plan, if that's a part of your plan and you say, look, I'm going to take one of the four triggers, if they happen, I'm I'm, I'm I'm taking it. And if XLK is one of your stocks and you're highlighting it and you have an alarm in place and uh, you you say, look, I'm going to take this trade and you don't. Let's say you don't do it initially. You hesitate. And I see this a lot where you, you might hesitate and then you see how it finishes the day and you're like, shoot, I really should have done this. So you end up doing it later. You put it on at a, at a much worse entry than what you should have gotten. And that's where this hesitation comes in. And um, sometimes you don't even include that in the mistakes you're making. But trust me, it's a big deal. This is a big deal. You have to know if you're not if you're not following your plan by taking the trigger the moment it happens, you got to kind of put that into your log sheet because if this is a recurring problem, um, it's something you need to work on. And the the funny thing is, is what you'll notice is that you'll have one of these things. And you could basically call them your demons of trading. One of these are a demon of yours. I don't know. You might have two or three. It's possible you only have one and you just keep repeating it. Maybe not every single trade, but every other trade or every third trade, you keep writing down the same things. Now, the opposite side of this would be trading, uh, would be jumping the gun. And that would be if you have this setup in place and you see this holding these two moving averages and starting to move up and you buy this at 140 here. Here, even you, even though you know the trigger is up here. Now, this is the difference between a yes trade and a no trade. In this case, you would have made money. It would have helped you. It would have made you think that you're actually doing the right thing. But you have to put no trade and you have to say jumping the gun. Okay, this is a no trade. Why is this a no trade? Because I didn't follow my rules. I didn't wait for the trigger to be broken. So you have to accept that um, sometimes you can do a no trade and make money. All right. We want to be process oriented, not results oriented when we're keeping our log sheet. We're, we've got the, we've got the results in the, in the form of win losses and how much you're making. Right. But the process is the yes or no is, are we following the process and doing the right things when we're trading? 
That's where we want all the yeses. If you follow the yes side of the equation, you keep checking yes, 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 and you don't, and you're not putting down all these demons that you have or potentially could have, then you're heading in the right direction. That's what's really going to improve your trading. But trust me, this is a very, very difficult thing to do. Um, the third one would be not honoring your stop. So if we think about this, let's say you put a stop in underneath this little gap area, this little tiny swing low at uh, 138 137.50 and it you hit you take the trade here and it turns down and it breaks this level but when you go and look at the weekly chart you realize you know what the weekly isn't breaking down this is uh this is actually still looks okay and so you don't honor your stop you say, you know what, I'm going to give it down to here. Now, that might have been the right thing to do from the beginning, but that's not what you did when you put the trade on. So you have to accept the fact that I have to take this stop and then re-enter if it turns back around. If it doesn't break down on the weekly, I'm going to go ahead and take the next entry if it sets up again. So... Um, you know, these kind of things. And then having your stop too tight, it, I think it goes hand in hand with this. So if you think about it, if you put your stop here and you know that you can get stopped out on this side, but it'll still look fine on this side. I don't really like that. I prefer to have a combination of if I get stopped out on the lower time frame, I prefer it to be breaking the higher time frame. Now, this won't happen every single time, but that is my preferred way of putting a stop in. If your stops are all, if you're always getting stopped out on the lower time frame and the higher time frame is still in position to go up, then I think your stops are too tight. So you want to check that. I've got some things that I do in the course that really help help with that in terms of using ATRs to help uh, define how far away you want to put that stop. Uh, but it's definitely something that I would incur or add to um, my approach. Now, one of the demons that I really um, worked on and had to had to really work on uh, early on was raising my stop too quickly. And so this would be a situation where I buy the stock perfectly. I buy it right as this is crossing here, right? And uh, let's just say that I'm using a really tight stop in this situation. And I'm not saying this is the right thing to do. I'm just saying I use a tight stop. And by the time this actually moved up to, uh, if it would have gone to here, then I would be at one to one. All right, but I bought this thing. It had a really great close. It had follow through to the upside and then it pushed up and that next day it started to turn back down. And I would say, wow, I didn't hit a target, but do I really want to take a loss in this? And what I would do is I would raise my stop to my entry point. All right. It didn't actually, my plan did not actually tell me to do this, but I was like, well, eh, if I get stopped out, no big deal. And in, the, in a lot of situations, it would get come down, it would tick down just like this, take me out, and then it would turn back up and go hit targets to the upside. All right. This was a demon. It took me a long time to kind of get over. I'm, so, I'm, I'm very risk averse. I don't like um, losing. Uh, tra I don't like taking losses, right? So I would want to go to a break even and say, ah, I took a break even, no big deal. But that can be one of the worst things you can do for your trading sometimes because you're not giving the stock that has great look to it on a weekly daily enough room to get to its targets. If you're, if you're raising your stop too quickly, you have to go check yourself. But more importantly than anything, you have to start putting it in your log sheet and say, okay, raising stop too quick, raising stop too quick. And I started to know Notice this over and over and over again. I couldn't believe how many times I had really what would have been very profitable trades that I ended up taking a break even on. So you have to learn about yourself. If you're going to trade and be good at trading, you have to know what areas are, are you, do you not know what type of trade you're taking? I do this a lot of times when I'm working with guys one-on-one. -on -one. They say they took this trade, and I say, well, what trade is this? Is this a pullback trade? Is this a, a breakout trade? What do you, what, is it a reversion trade? And they can't really answer that question. You need to be able to do that. Otherwise, you're basically making something up, right? And it goes hand-in-hand -hand with this next one, which is switching your trade while you're in it. So let's say you buy something off the weekly chart and um, or off the daily chart, 
chart and then it starts to move back down and you say, you know what, I'm going to use, I'm going to call this a weekly trade now. And you end up taking more risk and um, you, you're essentially switching what you're doing in the middle of the trade because you don't want to take a loss. All right. But a lot of that goes hand in hand with not knowing exactly what you're doing in advance. Um, another problem could be cutting your profits short. You just want to take profits. Uh, I've got professional money managers that do this all the time. I notice they want it. They just want to take a profit. Now, these are guys that are a little bit more active hedge fund guys. Um, and, you know, they're dealing with pretty good sized money. So they feel like, you know, I want to I, I, I want to make sure I book some gains here, especially in the environment we're in. But if it's not a part of your plan, you can't do that. Um, now, um, and I notice in the prof even at a professional level, this can hurt their profits in the bigger picture. Um, so um, and then the opposite of that would be not taking profits when they're available because you think you have a home run. You think you have this home run. It's you don't follow your plan. You don't take your targets. Um, other, other thing is like man mismanaging your trader, micromanaging. You see some big reversal bar. It's not a part of your plan to exit on a reversal bar, but it scares you out of the trade. That's micromanaging. Um, and then a, a big one is trading the same approach, the same time frame, no matter what kind of market environment you're in. Now, I go, to a, I go into a, these a lot more detail in the course, but a, a lot of these are types of things that you really have to know that you're doing wrong and have it over and over again in your log sheet. And if you can do that, you're going to start to show signs of improvement incrementally over time through each, tw each set of 20 trades that you do. All right. Hopefully this helps uh, give you a better idea of how to keep that log sheet up and working properly. Um, all right. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.